turning now to Wisconsin, where a preliminary hearing for defendant Samantha Krebs was held yesterday. The 39-year-old is accused of first-degree intentional homicide after she allegedly stabbed her boyfriend in the chest and then tried to convince friends to tell the police that he had actually stabbed himself. All right, I want to get you good folks into court for this preliminary hearing. On the stand is the officer who responded to the stabbing in July. His name is Sergeant Chad Riddle. Let's get into court. You just um, swear that the testimony you tell you show me the truth, the whole truth, and nothing about the truth, so help it back. I do. Go ahead and turn the tablets on your right. Thank you. Uh, Sergeant Riddle, what's your occupation? Uh, police officer Leah. Yeah. Were you working in that capacity back on July 18th of 2024? Yes. As an investigator, do you get called out in major crimes? Yes. Were you called out to an incident that had occurred at 2800 Park Drive Lane at apartment 5 in Appleton, Allegheny County, Wisconsin? Yes. What was the reason for you getting called out to that incident? Uh, the call that myself and other investigators were called out for was a stabbing that had occurred at the apartments in which the male who had been stabbed uh, was deceased. Did you have the opportunity or other officers have the opportunity to uh, enter into the apartment? Yes. And were there any observations in the apartment uh, with the deceased? Uh, yes, the responding officers located uh, an adult male on the floor within the kitchen of the apartment uh, who had what an apparent stab wound to what was described as the left rib area. Was there also um, what looked like a red substance in the vicinity of where he was as well? Uh, yes, there was a red substance on the floor uh, around him as well as on him. Did that red substance appear consistent with what might be blood? Yes. Was aid provided to this individual? Yes. And was he ultimately transported uh, to a hospital? Uh, no, he was not. He was pronounced deceased inside the apartment. This person is he referenced in the criminal complaint as JJC? Yes. In addition, was there any items located in the apartment that uh, could potentially have been consistent with the wound that he had? Uh, yes, there was a knife that was located in the sink uh, that was in the kitchen of the apartment. Who had called this incident in? Uh, a gentleman by the name of John Pfeffer. That's P-F-E-F-F-E-R? Yes. Was there also another person at that location when law enforcement was arrived? Uh, yes, a female by the name of Christy Cleland. Is that C-L-E-L-A-N-D? Yes. Uh, you indicated that um, GGC had died at the scene. Was an autopsy conducted? Yes. Where was that located? Uh, the, the autopsy was conducted at the Milwaukee County Medical Examiner's Office by Dr. Kelly. Did Dr. Kelly uh, have a preliminary cause of death at that time? He did. And what was that? Uh, the preliminary autopsy results were that the, the uh, JGC died of a stab wound. And was that stab, where was that stab wound located? To the chest. And was that consistent with what officers observed when they responded on July 18th? Yes. I'd like to come back to um, officers being dispatched on July 18th, 2024. Upon arriving um, at the scene and doing some investigation, did law enforcement um, make contact and talk with John Pfeffer and Christy Cleland? Yes. Was it uh, learned over the course of that time whether or not JGC had uh, a girlfriend or significant other? Yes. Um... We were informed that uh, JJC had a girlfriend uh, by the name of Samantha Krebs. And where was her whereabouts at that time? At the time the, of the initial responding officers, it was unknown where uh, Ms. Krebs was. Did you ultimately learn who Ms. Krebs was? Yes. Is she present in court today? Yes, she is. Could you please identify an item of clothing she's wearing or where she's seated? Um, yes, she's seated at the table to my left. Uh, she's wearing an orange uh, jumpsuit. Your Honor, I'd like the record to reflect identification. The record will still reflect for the purposes of this hearing only, obviously. Go ahead, counsel. During the course of the investigation, um, did you uh, have an opportunity to interview and speak? 
speak with John Buffer and Christy Cleland on uh, the night of July 18th into the morning of July 19th? Yes, I did. What did you learn from those conversations with them? Initially, um, myself and Sergeant Keith are spoke with John Pfeffer. Uh, John told us that the course of the events were that he and Ms. Cleveland had gone over to the apartments uh, where JJC and Ms. Krebs were. Uh, John had stated that when he went, he and Christy went inside, um, they located JJC on the floor. Um, with the stab wound. Um, Mr. Pfeffer stated at that point um, they provided aid to JJC and that he ultimately contacted 911. Did he indicate whether or not there was anyone else at the apartment when he arrived besides JJC? Uh, Mr. Pfeffer initially told Sergeant Keith and I that no one else was inside the apartment except JJC. During the course of speaking with him, did he ultimately provide you with different information? Uh, yes, he did. Um, when Sergeant Keith and I spoke with Mr. Pfeffer, uh, Sergeant Ewell, another investigator with our department, uh, spoke with Ms. Cleveland. Uh, Sergeant Ewell had indicated that Ms. Cleveland basically gave the same information. Um, after Sergeant Keith and I were done speaking initially with Mr. Pepper, uh, he informed us that he wanted to talk to us again, uh, but wanted to do so with Ms. Cleveland uh, present. Did, did you then talk to them both together? Yes, we did. And what did you learn at that time? Uh, Mr. Pepper told us that he had a moral problem and made the comments to Ms. Cleveland asking, should we, I think we should tell them everything that we know. Um, at which point then Mr. Beffer told us uh, somewhat similar to his first statements to us that he and Ms. Cleveland arrived at the apartments and upon entering inside the apartments uh, he observed JJC on the ground uh, but in his second statement to us he advised us that Ms. Krebs was present inside the apartments. Uh, Mr. Beffer stated that Ms. Krebs looked directly at him. Uh, I believe he said stated he looked into my eyes and said, just tell the police that JJC stabbed himself. All right, so a little quick context here. This is a probable cause hearing, mm -hmm. and they have the lead detective coming in, providing information to the court to determine if there's enough probable cause to bind this over for trial.